Hey folks, Chris Deleon here of Gamkeeter. We're going to do another speed coding demo. This time we're going to do one of a platforming game, which will not be a great full featured platforming game. We're not making Mario. It's going to be kind of junktastic, but that's part of the fun. Going to keep it light and airy, which is the way rapid prototyping goes. And once again, I literally specialize in rapid prototyping. Um, it's not that I am uh, canvas equals, hold on document dot get element by ID. This part I have to think about element by ID because this is something that only shows up once per program. It's kind of boilerplate -y stuff. Context. I heard somebody say like, oh, there's no way I'd want to write boilerplate. Like there's like three lines of code here. All right, so we're getting the context stuff. We're gonna have a few functions for the game's gonna have an update tick. We'll have a key release function on like last time. You know what? That's way too long. It's way long. Key up. Now we're talking key down. And those will be taken EBT. All right, we can think about those. Let's hook those up. Let's say set interval. So we're going to call update 30 times a second because it's as fast as humanoid can see. I know it's not true. I'm just trying to upset people. Uh, document dot add event listener. It's actually because we're making a pretty low performance browser game. Uh, key down is going to call key down. And we're going to hook up to the event for key up to call key up. And inside here, each one of these is going to be another switch case. You know, how I feel about switch cases and people who dislike switch cases for specific situations. All right. So th again, it's clockwise starting from left to 37. So beepity borp, 38, 39. And hopefully you'll notice my keys are quieter. I got myself a little shock mount, a little separation arm, put my keyboard up on a little blanket. Just try to try to make everything cozy and calm and quieter for us. Hold left equals true. We're gonna have a hold function out here to mediate our controls. Otherwise, it'll be independent, or otherwise it'll be dependent on our frame rate of our system, not our frame rate, our browser and our operating system stuff as to when the keys get held. So if on ground, then y velocity is gonna equal negative ten to boost us in the air. Uh, we're starting to think about what these variables are, right? So we got player x and player y. It's starting like two hundred. We got x velocity, y velocity is the one living thing in the world, zero by default. Gravity, let's call it zero point five. On ground defaults to false. We're on the ground yet. Hold left equals hold right equals false. Alrighty, so true. If we're on the ground, push us up in the air. Um, we don't even need to throw it to false. And we'll switch these cases over and up as well. And some people were like, hey, Chris, did you do this 100 times to memorize it? No, if I did, I would be making fewer errors and typing this better. And probably in a different order. Um, if y velocity is less than, if we're still going up at this point by that fast, we're slowing down. It's going to have us cap off our jumps. It's an important part of how Mario like games work. And now to get our logic working, Ooh, you know, let's also, let's add platformers, uh, platform equals empty list. Let's add 50 platforms. We're not, again, we're going to avoid the, I mean, I, yes, I use var when I'm not speed coding, but let's get real. This is speed coding. Uh, no, we don't have a link to it. So let's just do this. And now I'm just going to make some people really, I'm just going to smash that for loop again multiple times. We're going to push in object literals. Again, it's one of our space trading speed saving tricks. X is going to be math dot random times canvas high width. Gross. Man, crossing my axes. I'm tired from a day at E3. Been helping out with the Indicate booth, which you should check out Indicate if you know about Indicate. Indicate's pretty cool. We got one in New York City. It's Indicate East. We got one in recently Paris last year. It was our first one over in Paris uh, or over in Europe at all. So that was that was exciting and fun. I help run their workshops and uh, here at Indicate help kind of just help make sure developers are happy. Um, and I like people being happy who work on games because games are cool and I'm grateful people work on games and all that. So let's draw some stuff. This is going to be handy for us in a second because we're going to need that platform code. But first, let's do a context fill style to black first thing we do is black out the canvas between every frame if we don't do that then we're going to have smudgy graphics nobody wants smudgy graphics get out of here with that nonsense canvas width canvas height okay and we're going to draw our player next uh we're going to treat our player's collision as the point at the bottom of their feet because we are rushing and that's good enough for now again and literally specializing in rapid prototyping did i say fill style height Ooh, man i am sleepy Okay, it's late here. It's like 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, but I just got back from E3 stuff, so we're hanging out. Uh, fill rect. Yes! Oh, this will be so easy with our data structure we did. Man. 
X. Some of the people are like, hey, did you plan this out severely? Not really. The trick, as you'll see from some other videos, is that I've been programming a very long time, specifically specializing in rapid prototyping. Uh, white, so we got those for the updates. We're gonna draw all that mess. You can see borrow the same loop because we're also gonna have to check collisions against it. Speaking of action, uh, plus equals, ooh, uh, X velocity. And then Y velocity, so that's gonna keep our object moving along a vector. And if, hold left, Again, this is separated because otherwise it would depend on the repeat rate of the operating system, which I realized I messed up earlier saying that. And that'll equal negative two. If we're holding right, that will equal positive two. And if we're on ground, then we're gonna apply friction to our speed, times equals 0 0.7, seems harsh, 0 0.8. Uh, else, if we're in the air, then y velocity plus equals gravity. So that code makes a little bit of sense to us. And so now, uh, if we touch a platform, so if our feet, which is our px, is greater than the left side, and also it is left of the right side, so the left side plus the width of it will be the right side. And then we'll do this again. Some of the people think, okay, does it sound like Chris is talking too fast? Does it sound like he's accelerated his voice? No, I talk fast, especially if I'm not sleepy. I thought maybe if I do one while I'm sleepy, people won't be so critical of how, ta how fast I talk. Also, I tried talking slow for one video. People got mad at me and they're like, hey man, what's the deal? Why are you talking so slow? Speed it back up again. So my impression is YouTube likes the fast talk. Uh, so we touched the ground, so now it's true. Otherwise, we should default to assume we're not on the ground for the next frame. And uh, yeah, that seems like maybe the game there. I guess we got a game. Let's try it. Uh, Plat.html. Yeah. Play, typoed, but you know what? We're gonna embrace it and we're gonna run with it. We're gonna have fun, enjoy our lives. Things are good. Oh, look, it's a platformer. And sure enough, I run and I jump. Okay, I can run left and right. When I hold up, I jump higher. When I let go, I start to fall. That's again a classic Marioism. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, read that Steve Swink book, Game Feel. I think it's a little bit pricey, but it's a great book. It's one of the best game design books far I'm concerned. Disclaimer, Steve Swink was on my thesis committee. Double disclaimer. That was after I read his book and fell in love with the idea of game feel. Um, also, yeah, we go through the platforms in this case, but you know what? Contra does that, and Earthworm Jim does that, and as far as I'm concerned, if those games do it, maybe it's not all bad. And yeah, there's some bugs, like if I walk to a platform, I pop to the top, but guess what? We coded it really fast, and it's a platforming game. Speaking of which, every time I refresh this browser, completely different world to explore. Uh, yeah, procedurally gener generated worlds. Chris is calling, let's hang out together. So anyway, this was uh, obviously a horrendous coding mess. Shouldn't write code like this unless your whole point is to speed hack a rapid prototyping demonstration. If you're totally confused at what the heck's going on, I encourage you to go to codeyourfirstgame.com, which I'm gonna open a different browser, and go to codeyourfirstgame.com, which is just a redirect to my free Udemy course, taken now by fortunate, say, over 60,000 people. Check it out, I go a lot slower, I explain things in detail. This video you just watched is not meant to be a tutorial. It's a speed demonstration. I've been doing this for a long time. This is not usually how code happens. This helps walk you through the thought process in a little way that's a little more paced and explains what's going on as we go. We use the word var too, which I know makes some people happy. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, look forward to playing your games in the future. Chris Deleon here, signing out. Bye for now.